Hello and welcome to a, another episode of Land Rover Restorations. I um, can't remember what we did last time. Yeah, it was brake pedals, clutch pedals, all that malarkey, panel, uh, timing. So I haven't really got a plan where we're going from now because this wiring loom has really messed us up. Uh, I spoke to them today and they said it could be another six odd weeks yet, seven, eight weeks before it gets here. So not ideal. Um, I'd love to get the wiring loom in next and then we start connecting some wires up and get a battery and um, yeah, try to get it running. But there is lots and lots and lots of little bits to do um, that I'm just going to plod on with doing bits, paint bits um, and get bits up together just to keep it going forward. So I've bred the, bled the brakes now, which was really straightforward. We just went around and did all four corners, got all the air out, nice solid pedal now, which is good. Um, we've had one minor setback, we've had to go back a tiny little bit, and I'll show you that now. Um, but apart from that, all good. So I'll show you the setback. Steering box. <laughs> had a very very slight weep and I just thought while it's so easy to get at I'm going to take it apart and have a look and basically where this casting is been corroded over the years you can't really see on the camera but about here there's a tiny bit of corrosion that actually went through from top to bottom and in various places it, it was okay but it was just weeping a tiny little bit so what I did was I've knocked up some liquid metal and I've gone around and put liquid metal in all the little imperfections all the way around, let it go off, then I sanded it all back so it's all nice and flat now. Just waiting for a new gasket, I'll stick a new gasket on there, a bit of gasket sealant, bolt it back together, fill it up and hopefully we'll be good. But it was, you know, while it's got a little weep, I might as well get it done, it's easy to do it now. Um, as we saw last time, brakes are all done, put new spring on. Your brake pedal switch goes in here, which is operated by a, a little spring that comes off of there, and it's a brilliant little switch, it's literally just a contact switch as it, as it pulls. Um, so yeah, brakes all good now. We have a brake pedal, we have a clutch, operating clutch. So um, I put the coil on, put the coil on up there, put that on, clean that up. So about here somewhere sits a metal plate and on it is a voltage regulator, a little um, fuse and a fuel pump. And I thought, oh, I'll get on and get that done next. So I've taken it apart. There's the voltage regulator that was on there. There's the fuse and there's the petrol pump. And I've, it was blue, so I've just painted it blue. It's literally drying now. So when that's gone off, I'm just going to stick all those bits back on it. I've actually got a new second-hand um, pump because I didn't like the look of that one. So I've got, a, got another one of them. And then I thought I'll get the throttle linkage on. Is all here. So see, there's the throttle that's in the in the cab. Bolts on the bulkhead there, and then bolts on the bulkhead there, and then this bit sticks out. Um, I can't quite remember how it works actually. I will do when I put it together. So yeah, I've got to take all that apart, wire brush it all down, paint it black. Yeah, that would have all been black. So I get all that painted black, get all that cleaned up. Then we, I want to fill the holes in the dashboard, so we need to. We've got the little panels that this goes out. That needs cleaning up and painting. Um, I want to block that hole off over there. That needs sorting. So I can get those loads of little bits. I'm going to get done. Um, as I said on the last video, I'm going to get this seat box all cleaned up, jet washed off, and then painted. It's had a bit of a dodgy repair here that we'll have to look at. It's got a couple of little bits of it. A bit of work on this seat box, get all this done and get all that painted blue and then get that in which obviously sits in there. Um, and then yeah, all good. So what I do is I get these bits made up that I've got on the desk um, and then I'll show you when it's all back in place. I say just bolt bits on here, put them all back in place. I'm not going to do any of these bolts up tight because I know all the wiring loom disappears off behind here. So. Um, I just put it all on temporary. Um, this can go on permanently, and I might even stick the carburetor on actually. And let me just see if I have the switch to hand that is the brake switch. Yeah, 
so there's the brake switch, literally just a, oh, you can't see. Literally, bolts have been there, the spring attaches to that, pulls it and just makes contact inside. Can you see the way there? Inside, two little bits inside that do touch on the two terminals. So I'll take all that apart and get all that cleaned up and put that back on as well. So loads of little bits I'm going to do, get all the little jobs up together. So yeah, I will show you next time when we are sticking all these bits up, cleaned up and connected all the throttle up now. I don't actually think the Land Rover could have made this any more complicated, but they've managed to. It comes, well, start end here, pedal, shaft, out the side. Then the shaft comes out there, up, onto this connector, up, onto that one, and back out onto this one, down onto this one, down onto there, and back up the carburetor. Obviously the carburetor is on now. Um, see it all works. It's off with four. All good. There's my new recon well not new reconditioned Solex carburetor. Um, I'm showing them and I'm just doing the carburetor. I don't know what this one's for. This is getting me. Um, it's another it's another operating for the throttle. So whether it's a hand throttle or something different, I don't know. It's definitely got a place for a cable to go and it disappears off, so maybe it's for the hand thought or yeah, just to give it some revs um, for whatever reason. I think the choke goes onto that one and then through. Oh no, actually, I think the choke goes straight into there and on there, and then that is for the hand thought, yeah. I have to investigate that a bit further. You've seen all that, haven't you? That's all on new fuel pump, new line. I think our steering box doesn't leak anymore. Um, uh, yep, so come around here, put that panel on, there, there's the panel, clean that up and paint it that, put it on, and there's the hole there the choke goes. So I've just started taking the choke apart. So, basically here it is, I'll put it back together-ish. So there's the choke lever that you see, cold start, and so you pull that, and I'll see the end of the wire is attached to the choke which is pretty standard but then it's got a little lug just here that the lug on this sits in so when your choke's off that sits nice and flat like that and then when you pull the lever out it, the lug lifts this up this switch goes on here it hits the switch operates the switch and then tells you that the cold start is on, so it'd just be basically operating a light. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out how this comes apart. I just can't get it apart. So the only way I could see was just to bend that tab back there slightly, just to get that out. But I still can't get that apart. I think maybe this is supposed to come off the back here, and then you just lift that out. Yeah, I'm sure this is supposed to come off the back here, but it won't. It's totally seized in there, so I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm going to clean it all up as it is, get all this painted black, get that painted back, get it back on there, get the switch working, and then get the choke in place. So then everything for the carburetor, apart from the flexible fuel line, which goes from here, obviously we're able to the Union, will be on there. So we are getting there. All we need is the wiring loom, which I'm waiting on. Okay, so next time what will we look at? Um, oh yeah, we're still we're going to get on with that seat box. That's what we do next time. Time. Um, so there it comes through there, and then onto there. And if I reach in the top and operate it, that's how that works. And if you look here, we said that as you pull the choke, it lifts this metal bar basically lifts the switch and gives you a choke light, so here we go, pull the metal bar, there we go, up it goes, right there. 
it's so simple so simple it's quite cool really the way that is just so simple uh, it's the same as a brake light switch actually the uh, brake light switch that sits down there uh, they work exactly the same way we do that soon so yeah we have choke throttle brakes clutch everything it's all connected which is all good um I said my next job is the seat box which I'm doing now just start to clean all that up um, take the old jet washed off, get all the old paint off, start sanding it down. But there are a couple of broken bits, which are just here, which are quite common actually. On my Series 3s and 2s, these have been broken, and it's where it sits on these bolts here, where you bolt it down. It obviously just wears through and vibrates, and they always seem to break there. Um, so, what I've done is, or what I'm doing at the moment, is I've got an old rear panel from um, the back of an old series 3 that I did so I've got, old, I've got some spare aluminium so basically show you this broken one here it was like this that's yeah, just broken and worn through so cut it out nice and square clean up the aluminium either side and then just get a strip bend it like so, so it fits and then basically I'm just going to I've got um, liquid araldite metal so you put it over the two surfaces lay that back down obviously this extra bit of metal that you see is on the underside so you won't even see this from this side this is upside down now it'd be nice and flush clamp that clamp that let it go off grind it back and tidy it up and obviously that box is upside down at the moment and that will repair them too. There's a broken one here, obviously, like I just said, get that one repaired as well. Do exactly the same there. I've done a little repair up there. At the end of it, it snapped off, so I'm just letting that glue harden. And then I'll put some rivets in. And then, yeah, any more repairs that need doing, get it repaired and then start sanding. Get it all sanded up and sprayed grey, blue grey. So next time you'll see it. I've got an awful etch prime this as well, it's back to Bear Alley in a lot of places, so give it an etch prime it doesn't stick to the alley. Uh, yeah, so next time you see it, we'll have all that blue grey and probably be putting it on. And then we we'll do the tunnel as well, get the tunnel which sits, let's see just over there, get that painted up as well. Okay, so here's the seat box all done, repainted and put back in all the brackets for the seats. Good. All the doors. Okay, so I had some response, which is good, um, from these videos, and a couple of people have questioned a couple of things, and one of them was a friend of mine, and I can't believe that I didn't really notice it, but that is not a Series 1 handbrake. Um, that's I think series 2A3, definitely a series 3 handbrake um, but it was just on there and it fitted so I thought it was a correct one I should have realised that it's not a series 1 handbrake I believe the series 2 handbrakes come out and have a little kink in them and then the series 1s I think are pretty straight um, and that's a series 2A3, 3, let's say that's a series 3 possibly I can't really remember but that's not the correct handbrake so I've got to whip that off. I've managed to find a Series 1 handbrake, which is cool. So, handbrake lever. So, I'm going to put that on. I'll show you when that turns up, and we will put that on. And a couple of people have questioned the colour of the chassis, but I can assure you that is <laughs> the colour that it was. To, well, near as damn it. It was, a, it, was a very, it was very, very close to that colour. Um, so, yeah, but apart from that, it's all looking good and coming along well. So, Again, any comments or anything that anybody's got, great. Um, still waiting for the wiring loom from Auto Sparks, which is taking forever. Um, but what my plan is now is to get the floor in, which is all here. Well, we've seen that all ready to go. Um, get the floor in, get it all bolted down. I've got all the bolts now. And then we can get the exhaust pipe on. We've got the stainless steel exhaust pipe to put on. And then, yeah, I'll show you on the next step. By magic, we have the new handbrake. So, series one handbrake. I should have left this off to show you, but it basically just goes back in, same, same as the other one. But obviously, this is just a straight handbrake. 
So yeah, it's correct one on there now. Um, bolted this plate down. It's all bolted down. And I am just, I just painted the air filter actually. See it over here. So there's the air filter. Once that's gone off, or dried rather, stands there and then a little hose just goes around and connects onto the carb. I'm just putting this bonnet strip on because I, I got it. And basically what you do, see the holes underneath, just drill a little hole in this with your drill and then you have these which are slightly split so you push them through and then with a pair of pliers just open them up at the back so can't really see but we'll just take them up along there and I'm not going to cut this yet until I put the wings on when I put the wings on I'll cut it at the right length Okay, so I'm going to finish this off now. Exhaust pipe on, well, the front bit of the exhaust pipe on. Let's get that on. Um, and like I said, the air filter and the hose, because I've got that still waiting for the wire and loom from Auto Sparks. And if I've got to wait much longer, I think next one I'm going to uh, do this back section here. So on the rear of the front bulkhead, if it was, but the, you know where the window and that is on the back, I might bring that in and get that cleaned up. Um, we've got obviously all that back together now, a new gator on the high and low, four wheel drive. Oh, and the starter button actually, I did that the other day. So, there's the starter button, it was all seized actually, you see it's solid. Uh, it comes through here. Basically, I just opened it up, took it apart, cleaned it all up, put it back together again, so it's all good. And I think, yeah, from that one side, that goes straight to the battery. And then the other side goes straight down to Star Mower. But again, Auto Sparks um, have got those bits for me when it turns up. Okay, so we've had to sheet the Land Rover over now because I started on this back panel, which is the one we said we probably would. So it goes on top of the, the front bulkhead, if you like, the cab, the back of the cab. So I literally just started it, um, started taking it apart. There's nothing to take apart really, apart from the, I've just taken the rear glass, well it's not no longer glass, it's perspect, I should imagine it started off as glass and it is no perspex, perspex but to be honest it's quite nice and it fits there quite well can't really see the point of replacing it but if I can find some I may do but if not I'll put the perspex back in for now um, so I've just literally paint stripped it you see the red all underneath so yeah, what we're going to do is get it all paint stripped, the whole thing, cleaned up, and then I'll see the outside gets painted red, and then flip over and the inside gets painted blue, and then it can go back on. I can't seem to get the foam joining strip anymore, I spoke to a couple of companies who said they're no longer made, but I managed to get off of the internet some foam on a roll that's like 25 mil wide and 7 or 8 mil thick, so hopefully that'll be fine for jointing pieces. Um, and I've made, a, well, maybe made a decision about these, all this galvanising. There's so much galvanising on here and it all needs cleaning and making look nice. My initial plan was to take it all off, everything, all off the doors, the panels, everything, and get it all sent off and get it galvanised. But I've been looking at cost and time and all these, well not necessarily time because I'm not worried about time, but all these rivets that look so nice now and all done, I'm going to have to try and replace all of these. Some of these I can't get to with my tool that I've got, so I'm going to have to do them by hand. Um, my tool's like a clamp one either side, so... I've ordered some galvanised effect paint from Paint Man. I mean, they supply all my paint for everywhere else, and they said it's actually really good. It looks quite good. So I'm going to clean a couple of these down and try the galvanised paint and see what it looks like. Because at the end of the day, they're still nicely galvanised, they just look hideous. Um, but when I've cleaned them, they might look better. They might not even need the galvanised paint, but I expect they will. So it does look quite good. Like I say, they've got a picture on their website of a, a chain on the back all painted that looks lovely, actually looks proper galvanised. Which would be a lot less work and a lot less disturbance to all this, um, which is going to make a mess and I'm going to have to read it all. And it almost just seems pointless just for the look of new galvanised when I could probably get it from this paint. But we will see. I've ordered it today. It's only 40 quid for a litre, so um, when it turns up, we will see. 
So yeah, when I will get you back then is when this is all finished, possibly. Calvin, I see what you think of it. Um, yes, all good. This should look a bit different when you come back. Okay, so that's that side. I've literally just painted it. Just sprayed it. What I am going to do is fit it to the vehicle and I'm going to do the outside with paintbrush and roller I think because there's so much to mask off. It's going to be so hard to spray the little bits. Hope, well, either way it's going to come up nice and be red uh, next time you see it, probably on the vehicle. Um, so I sanded all this down, cleaned it all up, removed the runners top and bottom and then just sprayed it. My last comment as well was only a couple of minutes ago about painting these have since been to the Land Rover Legends at Foxton and spoke to a couple of Series 1 owners there and looked at all their cappings and some cappings had been painted some had been re-galvanised and some had just been left and cleaned up. So what I've decided to do, instead of the gal using the galvanised paint that I bought, is what I've got is sugar soap and wire wool and just gone along and cleaned them all up and then sprayed them with a lacquer just to protect them and stop them rusting anymore. And I think they look really cool. Obviously they're not brand new and shiny but I don't necessarily want them brand new and shiny. We kind of see where the door's scraped over the years here. Um, if the paint was any good, the red paint, we could just clean it up and leave it, but it, it's not. It's been gone over so many times, it's got to go back and start again. So the paint will look shiny, but it is quite nice to keep some features like this. Obviously, if I had to take all these off and get them regalvanized, I'd have to cut all these off, then replace the rivets, and on it goes. So. so, yeah, this bit will be red, the back will be red, and it'll be on the vehicle um, next time we see it. Okay. Okay, and this by magic, it's done. And on, actually. So, all good. All red. It's not bad. Paint job, but it's not the best. But then, like I said, I didn't want it to be absolutely immaculate. It's pretty good. And I'm really happy with leaving these. They look a lot better than trying to paint them with some horrible paint so yeah all good and obviously in here sliding windows got a little catch in the middle slide back I've got some new runners top and bottom put them in so yeah looks pretty good starting to almost resemble a Land Rover Seatbelts. I've got some, actually I went to uh, Land Rover Legends at the weekend and there was a stall there selling some second hand parts and I managed to get um, some, I'll take you in here, a set of seat backs. So I've got three seat backs, one that's got no cover on it at all, three seat backs and you get these reupholstered in the blue. Um, and I have got all the measurements for the um, seat bases, which is basically a timber frame, and then you have the foam inside of that. And I've got a friend around the corner that does upholstery, so I'm going to make up the timber frames myself and then get him to upholster them all. But next job, windscreen. So I've literally just got it out of storage. I've taken the, with the old rubbish windscreen wiper motors off couple of stickers and I'm just letting the paint stripper strip the outside and all the old paint to get all this cleaned up which would be quite straightforward and again I'll okay so windscreen is now on we cleaned it all up and lacquered it put the new seal in under here this is a bit of a flap which I might have to take off again because when I spray this red unless I mask it never think about that so next job is roof need to get the roof painted and get that on there and we've also got the complete exhaust system now, so just go outside and show you the roof. I started to strip it because it's got 10,000 layers of paint on it. So just going to take it, etch it, and then respray it. So just in the process of doing that, and then we are going to fit the exhaust pipe today. So I'll show you how that goes later on. 
so the exhaust pipe is now on. Fix there. This is a stainless steel exhaust pipe, by the way, which is good because it never rusts, rots, whatever. Mud shield here that we have to buy separate. Somebody made them, and you have a heat shield under here. You have to buy separate. But the exhaust pipe comes out underneath and the back, and then all stainless steel. So yeah, good forever. New clamps here. And rubbers and hangs off. It's all rubber sets. It's got some movement. Yeah, all good. So yeah, as I said earlier on, get this roof painted and get the bag on the palisters out there scraping it now. And there it is, a red roof. So I don't know if you can notice with this roof is you have one strip, two strip and the third one's missing. So for some reason there was a big panel cut out of this roof all the way around there, right the way out there and back down. I've had a look at it and I can't figure out what on earth it could have been for. I don't know if it was anything to do with when it was working, but I doubt it. I reckon, I don't know, maybe somebody cut a panel out so they could stand at it and shoot out of it or something. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know, but there's a big panel being cut out, and I did think about getting a new roof or finding a second hand one, and I thought, no, it's part of the history of the vehicle that it's been done. It doesn't look too bad. Um, you'll only notice it from if you look, so uh, the ladders will be over this side anyway. Maybe it's to do with that, I don't know. Anyway, next time you'll see it, it'll be on, um, and that might be the end of this video. But we'll get it on now, some new seals, and take it from there. I know I said you're going to see it with the roof on, but just before I put the roof on, on the back here where these tags are, this seal sits. So it sort of goes up underneath there and then bolts through. So I've got a new one, that's the old one. That's the old one, this is the new seal. But inside the seal, I think they call it a stiffener, which is just a metal bar. So basically, I had to just try and put some grease on this metal and then slide the rubber all the way over it which I have done and then this then goes oh, up, up obviously under those lugs and screws and I've got to cut it because the rubber's too long ok so next time you see it it will be on the vehicle ok a roof all done, all bolted on all sealed, all finished um, so yeah, we're going to call that it for this video. What we do next video, hopefully, hopefully, the wiring loom I've been told is in the next couple of weeks. So I ordered it in February, it's now mid-July, February, March, March, April, May, June, it's, it's ridiculous, five, six months from Auto Sparks, and they said there's nothing they can do about it, they're just making them as quick as they can. I've also ordered a battery for them, which is like a vintage looking battery with the lead bits on the top so it looks like an old battery um, so yeah we'll go to the next video we will hopefully get it running we'll put the wiring loom in connect everything up show you that and then put some petrol in it and try and get it going so things on there then it will be front wings on and bonnet on um, and doors that's more body work things really but I haven't shown you much of that because there's not much to it we strip it back to the bare alley uh, best we can then we etch prime it and then we spray it um, I'll give you a quick walk around this roof now. So yeah, that's that's it. Basically, same as uh, all series Land Rovers. Just bolts together in here. Three parts to it. So you just got well, you got the roof, which is that part, and then you got the the back piece there second part and then the windscreen so that's sort of the whole top of the cab and then obviously from down there you've got bulkhead and then you've got the, the, the rear bulkhead on these series ones so yeah that's it from the front so okay right next video we will be like I say wiring loom and hopefully get it going
catch you in the next one.